Hi everyone, my name is Bianca Nunez and I'm an employment and training specialist at City College. One of the departments I support is fire science technology. So I wanted to put this presentation together to share with you all information on my team, career services and how we can help you. And also on the application process, the minimum requirements and some tips and tricks um, in order to increase your chances of being considered with San Francisco Fire Department and other fire departments uh, in our area and throughout the state. And then lastly, we're just gonna go through a couple different career options for you to consider. Um, fire science is something that may take a while for you to get into. So there are some other things that can help increase your chances of being considered for the field. So let's get started with an overview of career services. First is industry specific supports, and that is resume, cover letter, interviewing, application support. Um, we do a lot of work in this area to help you prepare for your interview and prepare for different job opportunities. And we also do direct referrals to employers. So one thing that we do in our role is build relationships with different employers in the city and in surrounding areas. So sometimes, a lot of the research and relationship building that we have already done can benefit you because we can connect you directly to those resources that we have. Instead of you kind of doing that on your own, um, we're, we're able to build that bridge between you and employers in the field. So please feel free to reach out if you need support in that area or if you're wondering who's hiring or wondering what opportunities are currently available to you. A lot of the times we, we know about those things as part of our research that we do on the back end. One thing that I wanted to just say here is a lot of students are interested in working for San Francisco Fire Department and understandably so that that's our city and ideally that's what we want to do. But we want to encourage everyone to apply to all the departments around us because it will increase your chances of being hired and also increase the experience that you get so that you can bring it back to San Francisco one day. So a lot of students ask if I apply to another department or work for another department, does that appear as if I'm not dedicated to San Francisco and interested in San Francisco? And the answer is no. The answer is you want that experience. You want to get out there and do all that you can to add as much experience to your resume that you can so that San Francisco can see that you have been working in the field and now you, you wanna bring that talent to the city. And um, work experience in the field is something that increases your chances of being hired. And we'll go through some of those tips later, but that is one of them. So the next thing we'll look at is cooperative work experience. And this is a program that allows you to earn college credit for any work that you're doing. So a lot of our students, they work at Whole Foods because it's close by or they work in retail. Some of you might be EMTs or paramedics. So any work that you're doing except for Uber and Lyft because there's no supervisor to verify your experience with Uber and Lyft, but anything else you can earn college credit for. And the way you do that is by enrolling in Work Experience 333. You can look this up in the um, course schedule each semester and the corresponding CRN will come from that. You enroll in that CRN like you would for any other class and all you have to do is attend one mandatory orientation session. After you attend that session, you don't have to submit anything else except for your timesheet, which your supervisor will sign and that's used to verify your hours because as you can see here, 75 hours of paid experience is one semester unit and 60 hours of unpaid experience is one semester unit. So this works also for volunteer work and for internships. And you can earn up to six units in total for this program. And then you'll notice down here, WKEX777, this is for on-campus work experience. So for those of you that are interested in student worker opportunities, please feel free to ask me about that. There are different opportunities we can connect you to um, on campus. And so, you can earn the units for that in the same way, but the CRN will just be different. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna look at on this page is College Central Network. And I just wanna let everyone know about this because it's City College's internal job posting database and has over 2000 employers on there. So the employers range from 
business to child development to fire science, but whatever your major is, there is something for you. And all students are actually pre-registered for this. So I'll include this link in the comment section below. But if you click the link, all you have to do is enter your student ID and your email address, and then you'll be able to access the portal. And the benefit of College Central Network is that as uh, opposed to going to like LinkedIn and Indeed and Idealist, which are also great resources, if you come to College Central Network, you know that employers posting on this site want City College students specifically and see the value and the talent that City College students bring. So chances are, if you respond to an employer who's posting on this site, you are going to get a response um, versus maybe another website. You don't know what that line of communication is going to look like. So it is a really good resource for you if you are job searching. And the last thing I want to point out on this page is just my contact information. If you have questions or you want help with your resume or your cover letter or you have an interview coming up, or you want to know about different opportunities that are available. For example, right now, the city and county is hiring for um, safety dispatchers, and Marin County is hiring for um, seasonal firefighters. So just some opportunities like that that we um, keep track of. So please email me, bnunez at ccsf.edu, and I can definitely help you with anything that you need support with. Okay, so we'll move on to the application process. And this application process is going to cover San Francisco County. So um, just keep in mind, some of the other counties might differ a little bit, but um, I'll also include this link in the comment section below. It's the link to the city and county of San Francisco's H2 Firefighter online application. And H2 Firefighter is San Francisco's classification for entry-level firefighter. Um, one tip I wanna give you about the application with the city and county of San Francisco is that you want to be very thorough in how you fill it out. So make sure you're including all of your relevant work experience, all of your history. It, just because you upload your resume, um, that's, that's not good enough for them. They want you to include every single detail of your work experience, of your education, all your qualifications, all of your certificates, your language abilities, um, anything else that you think are going to increase your chances, please clearly spell that out in your application, because if you don't, there's a chance they will reject you. So please be specific in that way. But I wanted to go into the minimum requirements for San Francisco. So first, you must be 19 years of age or older. You must also hold a high school diploma and have a class A, B, or C license. And I just wanted to make a note in regard to the license that um, one year prior to your application, you cannot have had a DUI, a reckless driving, or a hit and run. And then no felony convictions are allowed in the state of California or any other state. And then a note there as well is that one year prior to your application, you cannot have been on misdemeanor probation. So just keep those two things in mind. And then you need your EMT license, or in lieu of that, you can submit your paramedic license. And then you will also need to pass CPAT. And CPAT is a physical ability test that measures candidates' ability to handle physical demands on the job. And it's a time test. Um, there's eight different elements, and all those elements are designed to mirror the tasks that you'll actually deal with on the job. So, Physical ability and fitness for this role is extremely important. Um, City College offers P29, which actually helps you prepare for the CPAT. So there are a lot of resources available to you. Um, another minimum requirement that's not listed here, but we're gonna go into right now is the NTN fire team test. So before we do that, I just wanted to give you an overview of these two things right here, NTN fire team and FCTC. And the differences in these tests are just a, a few different components and maybe some structural things. Um, the main difference is that NTN is used by San Francisco and a few other departments. Uh, for example, I know Fremont uses it, but the FCTC is used by many more departments, our, our local counties and cities. So Contra Costa, Alameda, Santa Clara, 
pretty much all of the Bay Area counties, except for San Francisco, use FCTC. Um, the main things that are the same between the two is that they're both about two hours or so in length, and the scores on both last about a year. But let's get a little more specific into them. So before I give you an overview of this, um, the structure of the NTN fire team test comes in four components. So it's the human relations test, which is video based. And then there's a mechanical potion, portion, which is video based. And then there's reading and math. So those four components are important, but the most important is the human relations portion. And I'll show you a sample video over here that came from a practice test that I took online. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But before we get into that, I wanted to go over these different principles over here. A lot of these principles have come from people who have been successful on the test, um, from some instructors, from students who have taken the test, um, and from people in, in fire science who have been successful on the test and, and are currently firefighters. So I just wanted to go through each one of them quickly. Um, the first one is assume positive intent. And this goes to giving people the benefit of the doubt. Um, when you're working in a team environment or even in the field, you wanna assume that, that people are doing the right thing. And this comes from the perspective of building positive team relationships and rapport. Um, because when you're engaging with the community and even when you're with your team, a lot of things are, they're done in group work and a lot of the times you're, you're facing situations where people are in crisis. So how are you going to work together as a team to combat that and, and work to de-escalate situations? You have to have that, that foundational relationship there in place. So it, it's extremely important to focus on that. Um, that also lends to maintaining good community and public relationships. Um, this is a, a very highly visible role. So the way you conduct yourself and your level of accountability that you have, um, it's, it's really important because a lot of that can dictate what the public's perspective is of firefighters and of the department and, and the city as a whole. And then a lot of these scenarios, um, not a lot, maybe some, but you'll see some situations where some people might be trying to provoke someone else or maybe someone is just really upset and irate. And you always wanna think about how you're going to respond to that um, because you always wanna think before you react and you always wanna to aim to de-escalate the situation and make sure that you're not causing more harm than you could have if you responded in a, in a way that was more proper. So, the next one is taking initiative and being industrious. Um, this is important because you'll see some scenarios where the chief might be asking a group of people for a volunteer. And you always wanna be that person to volunteer and, and go above and beyond. There are gonna be times where you'll see in videos, other people aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing, but you always wanna make sure that you're taking initiative regardless of what's happening around you. And then, this next one is, is really important. You'll see this in the example that we're gonna play, but praise in public, criticize in private. And this lends to a lot of different elements, um, mainly the, the team relationship and rapport building. You don't wanna call anyone out or, or embarrass them or put them on the spot. You always wanna have that conversation in private and give them the benefit of the doubt, give them the chance to talk to you and, and maybe explain maybe something was happening that, that you don't know about. Um, and it, it's always good to, to give that feedback privately. And then above all, put safety first because that's the core foundation of this entire role is, is safety. So sometimes you'll see that multiple things are happening in a scenario and you might wanna lean towards one thing, but um, just remember that safety always comes first no matter what. So. With that, let's take a look at this example and then we'll talk a little bit about the example. Let me get that for you, buddy. Hey, Robin. Hey, Robin, can you have some potatoes downstairs for me, please? Sure. Thanks. Let me take 
this out for you. Thanks. Give you another liner when I get back. That's good. You know, when I was on probation, I never sit around like that. Me either. You're gonna get that or what? All right, I got it. Our department. What can I do to help? Nothing really. I'm just about done here. It looks good. Hey, someone needs to go downstairs and uh, get a blood pressure. If you were the hard-working recruit, what would you do? A. Offer to get the blood pressure. Later, privately tell the rookie who answered the phone that he should do more work so you both will look good and be successful. B. Tell him right now to stop being so lazy. C. Stay out of the whole situation. Let the two experienced firefighters decide how to handle it. D. Go get the blood pressure, but let your supervisor know about the extra work you're having to do. Okay, so in this situation, the correct answer is A. Um, for several reasons. So offering to get the blood pressure shows that you're taking initiative, that goes to industriousness, and then later privately telling the rookie who answered the phone that he should do more work so you will both look good and be successful. That goes to um, rapport building and relationship building because you don't actually have to say anything to him, but it shows that you're looking out for him and, and you're trying to um, build that relationship with him, not only so you will look good, so that he will be successful too, um, because you care about him and his success. And then one of the other elements is um, praising in public, which didn't happen here, but criticizing in private, which did. And that's the important element of giving that feedback in private so that you're not embarrassing someone, and you're not putting them on the spot, but you're giving them the opportunity to take the feedback and do something with it. Um, some of the other answers, like B, for example, tell him right now to stop being so lazy. Obviously, that won't work. Um, C, stay out of the whole situation. Let the two experienced firefighters decide how to handle it. That might seem like an option. And then go get the blood pressure, but let your supervisor know about the extra work you're having to do. So um, D is not the right answer because you don't want to escalate anything to the supervisor that doesn't need to be, especially when you're a rookie, you probably wanna to try to handle that on your own and then stay out of the whole situation. By staying out of the situation, um, you're not actually taking initiative to try to make anything better. So A is the right answer for the different reasons that, that we described. So um, these are just, this is just one example of one of the questions that might come up on the human relations portion. And so if you keep these principles over here in mind and practice, um, the chances, chances are you'll, you'll do well. Okay, so let's go into FCTC. And um, I generally know less about FCTC, um, but what I do know about it is that it is similar to NTN in that they have the different sections of the recall and comprehension. So where the NTN plays a number of different scenarios, the FCTC plays two and then asks you for recall and comprehension based on those two scenarios that you saw. Um, and then they also have the mechanical portion, the math portion, and then they have a technical portion. So the benefit actually of taking the FCTC is that you're added to a statewide list, whereas the NTN you're not, you're just being considered for San Francisco with NTN. 
And the other benefit is that a lot of local departments use FCTC. So if you live here in the area and you want to be considered for a number of departments by only taking one test, FCTC is, is definitely a good thing to do. So um, between the FCTC and the NTN, again, they're, they're pretty similar, but it just depends on where you want to work. So if you don't want to work for San Francisco at all and you want to stay in these other counties, FCTC will, will be your go-to. Um, but if you want to be considered for both, then you do both. And, and we recommend that you do both just to broaden your, your chances of being hired. Um, so I just want to quickly let you know, if you want more information on NTN, you can go to nationaltestingnetwork.com. And if you want more information on FCTC, you can go to fctconline.org. And that will give you more information about which departments accept which tests, um, some practice tests, some maybe written practice material, and you can do some more of that research. But if you would like help with a practice test for NTN, please reach out to me and I can support you with that. Okay, so we'll go into tips. And a lot of these tips come from the San Francisco Fire Department, from um, information sessions with Keith Baraka, who is the recruiter for SFFD. And a lot of this information also comes from students in the field who have been successful, some counselors, some advisors, some of your instructors. So we'll go through each one of these and just give you a little bit more information on what you can do to increase your chances. So first, I wanted to just explain a little bit more to you about NTN and FCTC because your scores on this test are actually the thing that have the greatest impact on whether you are called for an interview or not. So um, you could have everything else, but if you don't do well on the tests, chances are they're not going to contact you. So for NTN, it sounds like the most recent um, status was that they're contacting people who rank 12 and above, but obviously the, the higher you rank, the better your chances are. For the purposes of this presentation, I just included rank one through five to illustrate to you what that looks like, but only people who are veterans can rank one on this test um, because you get an additional 35 points for being a veteran and then 75 points if you're a disabled veteran. And so the rest of the converted scores are here on this side. So I'll give you an example. Let's say in order for you to fall into rank five, you have to score somewhere between 90, 91 and 9317. So let's say someone scores 9212 and 9301. It's too much for them to have to list all of those out individually. So anyone who scores within this range will have a converted score of 945 and a rank 5. And that works for everything else. So as long as you have rank 12 or higher, you should be able to be called for a position and um, them reaching out for an interview is based on a ton of different factors, which we'll continue to, we'll continue to go through in the rest of the um, tips in this section of the presentation. But um, regarding the FCTC, you need to score 70% or higher and um, you're placed on a statewide list again. And for both of these, you remain on these lists for 12 months. So we really recommend that you do as best as possible the first time around. So practice and reach out for support. There's written materials online through the websites that I just provided. Um, the reason that we recommend you do the, your best the first time is because the most recent set of scores is always used. So let's say you take the exam, you're not happy with your score the first time, and then you take it again and you do worse the second time, the second set of scores is going to be used because your most recent scores are always the ones that are used. So sometimes people do take the test again and end up doing worse the second time. Sometimes they do better the second time, but there's, there's always a chance that it could go either way. So your first time is the best shot usually. And another thing to notice is that if you do take the, um, the NTN a second time and do better, 
your scores on the eligibility list for San Francisco, they're not going to be able to be updated until the next iteration of the eligibility list comes out. So even if you do better the second time around, um, it's not necessarily going to change your rank in San Francisco because they're not going to update those scores until the next eligibility list comes out. And so in some instances, you might have to wait quite some time before that's able to happen. So that's that one. Let's go into, we'll do certificates and education next because a lot of students ask what they can do as far as classes to, um, or, or their major or their focus to increase their chances of being selected. So as far as certificates go, there's two at City College that will help you, which is the firefighter one, which you can get from the fire academy. There's five prerequisites for that. And then you also need a medical and physical release. It takes about four semesters to complete and you end up with a certificate of achievement. And then there's also the paramedic one. Um, this requires that you have your EMT license and six months of experience. And this one takes about five semesters minimum to complete um, because it includes lab, clinical, and field experience. And you also get a certificate of achievement for this one. So both of these certificates are recognized and um, desired. So you'll be doing yourself a favor if you get that. Um, let me go to education quickly. Um, there is a push towards your associates and bachelor's degrees and even master's being a little bit more of a factor. So I know that they do want people to have higher education more and more. So for those of you that are interested, um, some different majors that you can look into, maybe some like psychology, communications, you know, administration of justice, um, fire science, diversity and social justice, Anything that is going to show that you're able to work with a, a wide variety of people, given that our city and, and the Bay Area in general is so diverse, you want to illustrate that you have that experience, not only in the classroom, but you, you have that, that working experience too in real life. Um, some other courses that help are public speaking courses and communications courses. And this is for a number of reasons. The main one being that in this role, you communicate with so many different people. It's important to be comfortable with those skills. Another reason why this will help you is because when you get to the interview phase, you need to be able to relay your ideas effectively. A lot of people get really nervous and they're not comfortable speaking in front of a group of people. A lot of the times city interviews are going to be panel interviews. And so you're gonna be speaking in front of multiple people at the same time. Um, there's also the, the neighborhood emergency response team training, for example, that's taught by firefighters. So a lot of firefighters volunteer to go and speak to groups of, you know, 60 or 70 people who are receiving this training. So anything that shows that you are able to speak with people, whether it be one-on-one -on -one or in group settings, um, that's, that's going to be helpful for you. So let me go back to this slide. Military experience is also really important. Everyone that I've talked to has said that they value this so much, um, mainly because um, it shows that you're able to work in a chain of command, that you understand that, that rank and order um, ideals that, that are also employed in the fire science field. Um, it also shows that you know how to work closely with your team and, and work effectively with, with your team. And then that you understand the importance of unit cohesiveness. So a lot of the times you're, you're in the fire department with people for a long time. Um, do you clean up after yourself? Do you take initiative to do things? Are you respectful? Um, you know, do you give other people privacy and space? Are, are you someone who tries to, to speak to people and, and bring the best out of them? Is your attitude good? Are you adaptable? Are you flexible? So all of these things are, are really important. Um, and they can glean this from, from your experience in the military. So if you do have military experience, I encourage you to really um, highlight that in your resume and in your cover letter and, and your application. And even in your interview, draw from that experience and talk about how that's helped you and how you will apply that to the job of firefighter. Okay, so we'll go on to um, work experience. 
And some of these same things are a little repetitive, but um, EMT and paramedic experience will always be relevant in this field. Also construction, um, because you are dealing with buildings and um, foundational things and, and spatial reasoning and determining different things when it comes to tools. Um, so that's really important too. And then anything engineering is also important. Um, there's a lot of people who enter the field who, who have an engineering background. And then again, as we just talked about, military experience is, is very important. And you also get the veterans preference points for that. So, okay, so this is the last slide in this series, which is volunteer work. So um, volunteer work is really important because it speaks to the principle of taking initiative and industriousness also to building positive um, public and community relations. It shows that you're willing to take your own time, which is generally unpaid, to uplift the community and provide some critical resources to the people in our city and in other cities if you decide to do it there. But these are just a couple examples of what we can give you. Um, students often ask which, which are best, and I don't think there's a best answer to that. I think the answer is whichever one you enjoy doing the most, because chances are if, if you enjoy doing something, um, it'll last longer and you'll, you'll come off as, as more positive and engaged. So um, we encourage you to seek out the ones that, that you are interested in and you like best. Um, but these are just some examples. So NERT and CERT are neighborhood and community emergency response teams. The only difference is NERD is San Francisco and CERT is for some other counties. And then, you know, there's, there's toy drives, there's safety fairs, we have the fire reserve. There's a number of things that you can do that are not listed here. Um, one thing we recommend that you do is to join San Francisco Fire Department's WhatsApp group so that you can be notified of volunteer opportunities. So I'm part of the group and they often send out different things that are available coming up so you know about it. That way you're not searching on your own, but you're available to um, dispatch to the different ones that um, you know the San Francisco Fire Department is going to be at, which is also a great opportunity to network with them. So you can text 415-385-9866, your name and email address, and Keith Baraka, the recruiter for San Francisco Fire Department, will add you to the WhatsApp group so that you can stay current with the different things happening in the city. The last thing I want to mention that there's not a slide for is that another way to increase your chances of being hired is if you speak another language. And in San Francisco, we have, you know, the, the common languages, Spanish, Cantonese, Mandarin, but um, ability to speak another language, even if it's outside of those, it, it's going to be extremely helpful because our, our population is so diverse. And so that is something that they take into account when they're looking at your application. So if you don't know another language, you might consider learning one if you have the time, um, although it is not a requirement for you to be selected. Okay, so that's that. Let's go to the last slide, which is career options. I just wanted to go over a few different things that you're able to do either on your way to becoming a firefighter, um, to increase your chances of being hired, or things that you might end up wanting to do ultimately. So um, again, EMT, paramedic, we'll always repeat that one when it has to do with fire science. But some people end up going into forensics, which is interesting. You can work in a number of different environments with forensics, for example, in, in the courts. Um, there's police and fire dispatcher roles and um, different counties and cities are always hiring for this. It's a job that's pretty in demand. It gives you really good experience into the back end of the field, um, working with the different systems and, and being an operator and speaking with people and maintaining your calm. So it's a really good role. I know right now San Francisco is hiring for um, public safety communications dispatcher, as is Fremont. So these, these come up pretty frequently and they're, they're well paid and they're good opportunities. They're great to add to your resume. Um, a lot of people go into police work, um, also into sheriff's departments, um, which deal more with the jails and the courts. People also go into inspections and investigations. And then one thing um, we want you to consider is becoming a seasonal firefighter. 
um, you know, the, the peak season is, is coming in a few months. I think it starts in around July or August, but many departments start hiring in advance for this because the hiring process is a little bit long. So if you're interested in doing seasonal firefighter work, this will also increase your chances of being hired permanently into a position um, by learning, getting that training, meeting with different um, people in the field, responding to those calls, and being able to build up your skill set so when you are hired permanently, you have some experience. So that's just a quick overview. Other than that, um, if you have any questions about any of this or want more information or want to speak one on one, please reach out to me. My email is bnunez at ccsf.edu. And my phone number is 415-239-3922. So thank you all for watching. I hope you're doing well. Take care.